The song Wreckage, um, back, uh, you know, at home in Louisiana, one of the best producers that's out, period, bar none there, is a, a guy we call Mouse on the track, produced all of Lil Boosie's hits, all of Trill Entertainment's hits. Well, I went to the studio when I was recording, and, uh, you know, after we, we were done, you know, he pulled me to the side, he said, man, I want you to check this track out. I'm on fire, me. You know, I made it for, for Flo Rida, and but I want you to hear it just to see what you think. And he turned it on, and, man, I freestyled for a little bit on him. He said, man, I can make them guys another one. you got to have this one. So I leave, and, you know, two days later, uh, they all in the studio waiting on me. So I'm on the way to the studio right in the court. You know, get to the studio, I call my woman up, and I say, babe, I need you to come over here and sing the first part of this chorus. And uh, I think we got a hit. To me, getting a, an opportunity to work with Maurice Starr is a, a dream come true. Um, you fight so long in this game and work so hard and you have ups and downs, uh, just like anything else. You know, when, when I get to be with a person that has created legends in this, in this industry like, you know, Maurice, um, you know, he's created from new addition to new kids on the block and worked with hundreds of legends and new addition turned into to stars on their own from Belle Biv DeVoe to you know and with Bobby Brown these guys were just legends for me I get chill bumps even thinking that I've, I've reached this this period in my life where I get this opportunity to work with a legend himself I get my influences in music, you know, from a, a wide spectrum. Um, just from where I live and where I grew up is a huge, huge influence. Um, we've had, we have such a cluster of different types of, of music there. Um, it's crazy. I mean, Louisiana is known for jazz, from the hip hop to R and B to country singers to rock and roll. You know, it's such a big cluster there. But not only there, um, my father's from Trinidad and Tobago, uh, which is a Caribbean reggae style of music that, you know, every time we were with him and whenever we had a chance to do parties and whatnot, we was listening to Bob Marley. My influences were from those sounds I heard as a young child. My mother's name is Sadie, S-A-D-I-E. She's one of the strongest people on, on this earth, you know, and a huge influence on us. And when it came to music, uh, she knew how to take rough arguments and situations and turn them good with music. Well, I, I kind of, you know, grew on to that and did the same things with her. So every time I was bad or I'd do something wrong, you know, I'd go over and I'd sit on a lap and I'd sing a, the song, Sadie. Oh, Sadie, don't you know we love you, sweet Sadie? Place no one above you, sweet Sadie. Well, well, well. Living in the past. Sometimes it seems so funny. No money will turn your life up. The song Dock of the Bay has a very special place in my heart. Um, we were working on this song and went to grab a, a bite to eat. I, we figured out we wanted to remake this Dock of the Bay. And we worked on this thing all day, all day, where we get it to where it's today. It sounds like a today song. I'm whooped. It's probably late as can be, so we hungry. I said, let's go get a bite to eat, and we'll come back and finish. But while we're eating, you know, I look over and see Macy Gray sitting right there. And I uh, introduced myself. I said, look, I'm a huge fan. And, I just, I'm not trying to bother you, but I'm, I appreciate all the work that you've done, and uh, I thank you for it. She said, well, what are you doing here? Because I know you ain't from here. I said, well, I'm here hopefully recording my next single. And uh, she said, well, I got to hear it. I said, well, here's the address to the studio. Come check it out. I didn't think she was going to show up. She shows up, knocks on the door, let me hear it. So I turned it on. She said, baby, I got to get on this one. I said, well, get on it. Let's go all the way. She went in there and recorded it like a true pro, and she's actually a real close friend of mine now. And is, 
kept in touch with me and checked on me and, and you know, led me in a lot of right directions for sure. Pull up, bang in it, that's my 24 peep, peep, you look so shy. Cleaning the border, help, and I make you melt, we losing in a high, high. Green light, green light, watch me go out, out to the races, Mario. Yo, shirt off, things to the roof, screaming, you better watch me in the middle. Watch this, I, I mean, I was doing song after song after song. I said, man, look, I, I love all this, this real universal pop type stuff and, and everything else. I said, man, I want to do something that, that reflects where I'm from, the kind of, the gutter club music that we were used to hearing. I said, man, give me something that's, these songs are easy to me. Let, let's do one that's hot, you know, there's something back home that's gonna make them go bananas in the club. And he gave me this track and it, you know, I wanted to talk about being in the middle of the floor saying, watch this, you know, uh, tearing a club down, just like we do it, just like you want to do it. And uh, it came out hot, I can't wait for you to hear it. different is you know I think it comes from a different place um, you know I don't get me wrong I respect all those artists that came from where I'm from you know from the the cash money the whole cash money family from Lil Wayne to Juvenile to to all those guys baby slim um, and even no limit with Master P and and mystical and silk and and C murder and all those guys they were great but you know you know I think I get my sound from a different area, from a different lifestyle. Man, uh, the song Heaven, uh, you know, I got this this track and this record and loved it to death. And, and you know, we got to talk about how it's almost a good time and bad time type thing. And in the good times, it all feels like you in heaven. And, and in bad times, you know, uh, the way I look at it is don't dwell on it. It used to feel like heaven. Now I'm in a life full of sins, all seven. Your boy down bad, but I ain't never gonna tell them. They try to knock me down, but on top where I'm hidden. Make it what it is, you know, make it better. If it's bad times, live with it and, and focus on the flowers and not the weeds. Um, it's basically my message in that song. Um, the song she set a fire to me is, you know, I was, I was in LA and I'm sitting there with, you know, my engineer and uh, another partner of mine, uh, Junkie and Colin. You know, we working on songs. When we knock songs out there, it's it's 15 a day, 16 songs a day. Uh, but the last one, I said, man, you know, what was crazy because we were listening to some Jimi Hendrix and some other. And I said, these guys, they wrote. It didn't make sense to nobody else, but it made sense to them. I said, I want to do a song that kind of don't make sense, but it does, and it's hot. It's weird enough to make people go, what the heck is this? But it's just hot enough to where it don't matter. And that's what we got out of the song. It's, it's basically about a girl, you know, coming in into my life and setting a fire to me, for sure. Uh, and you can take that literally or, uh, you know, any way you really want to take.